Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, I thought I'd give you everything I know so far about the Expedition Mechanic and how I'm actually getting some rewards from it. So a lot of people have been asking how it works, you know, how to get rewards from it, and saying it's unrewarding. Well, let's get into it and figure out what we need to do here. So, of course, let's start off with the maps. So this is primarily where you're going to engage with the mechanic and most of the things that you're going to be doing with it. So it's very, very important that you understand what is going on. So of course, let's talk about the chests and the monsters first. So chests are marked with these like little fly posts here. And when you unearth them with your explosive detonations, like by hovering over here, um, it's essentially going to unearth those chests and you can click on them and it'll give you... Uh, uh, the, the currency for the new vendors. That's pretty much all it'll give you as a baseline. Basically, only the currency for the vendors. It doesn't drop maps, it doesn't drop you know, currency really, it doesn't really drop anything. Just drops the vendor for the currency uh, for the vendors, um, and that's it. Now, there's obviously different types of chests, like this is some, some sort of a red chest. This will drop more vendor currency than normal. And there's also what's called runic monsters. So runic monsters are designated by these skull posts here. So this is going to contain three runic monsters here. And runic monsters are essentially rares from the new league. And they're, uh, you, you know, reasonably tough. Um, but it's very, very important to remember the keyword runic monster because that's going to pop up later. Okay, so the other thing you need to look at here is these things here, unearth remnants. So Unearthed Remnants are essentially um, map modifiers that apply to your expedition. And they are the only way, pretty much, that you can get rewards at all from this lead mechanic outside of the vendor currencies. They also heavily augment the amount of vendor currencies and reroll tokens that you're expected to get, as well as logbooks. If you're running... Uh, expeditions without using remnants, it's definitely very underwhelming and you're not gonna get a whole lot of loot. Uh, and I'll go into the reason why that is. So let's start off with some basic ones here. Of course, there's basic remnants like 25% increased pack size. That's already a 25% more multiplier on the loot from monsters, right? That's crazy. But then there's also stuff like 50% increased quantity of artifacts dropped by monsters. So that's 50% increase and then it's times 1.25 already. So that's crazy. You're already getting way more loot. It's almost, it's almost double already just by using two remnants. Uh, and that's very, very important to realize. But where it really starts to get good and makes sense of why they kind of coded it this way and made it this way is when you get two remnants like this. So see how it says runic monsters. That's the rares. The rares, which are these big flag posts, have a 35% chance to drop an additional fraction item. That is a flat drop chance. So it's basically one in three monsters are going to drop a, uh, a fractured item. And this can, there is one of these four like stacked decks, legion splinters, scarabs, you know, pretty much everything in the game. Uh, there's one for maps as well, I'm pretty sure. So these remnants here are an absolute priority. It's a flat rate. So it's actually incredibly strong. Now this can be applied to runic monsters and chests, I believe. I believe the one that applies to chests is a little bit higher, um, but yeah. Definitely pretty, pretty, pretty good there in, uh, in my opinion. There's also remnants that augment the actual encounter itself. So one of them, for example, uh, which is quite rare, but is found in logbooks quite often, is uh, it says that it doubles all runic monsters that are excavated. So let's say that I had that double one here, then I would get not three runic monsters, but six runic monsters. And then they would all have a 33% chance to drop a fractured item. Uh, which is pretty damn good. Um, so overall, it really is all about the remnants and making sure that you get enough of them on your map. Now, there is a bit of nuance to the remnants as well. It's very, very important to note. So the explosive system in Expedition is really the heart and soul of it. That it does take some planning and it does take some observing in order to use. And if you don't, you're basically going to get diddly squat from this leap mechanic overall. Um, so you do need to make sure that you do that. All right, so let's get into it. So <clears throat> the uh, the explosive chains in Expedition are actually very, very, very impactful. So you can see here that we can place an explosive um, an explosive anywhere around a certain radius of the fuse box. And, you know, you can kind of uh, play with this radius and test what it is. Um, and that is like the first thing to note here. Now, your goal with your first explosive charge is going to be to select the most powerful remnant Overall, so I think the most powerful remnant here is probably this uh, unearthed remnant over here. 
uh, the stack deck ones. So runic monsters have a 35% chance to drop an additional stack deck. Make sure you observe the, um, the, the modifiers here. Some of them are completely ridiculous. Like this one is basically ailment immunity for all monsters. That's crazy. Um, and then there's also ones, you know, like, which is like a hundred percent chance to crit for monsters. And this one says monster hits can't be evaded. That's ridiculous. That's basically a whole entire defensive archetype nullified. So it is quite intense. Uh, and you do need to make sure you pay attention. You don't make it too hard for yourself. Um, there's also ones, I think probably one of the worst ones is obviously the physical and all the air damage immunities. But the other than that, the one you want to look out for is the one which gives them insane life regeneration and flat damage reduction. If you stack too many of the damage reductions, they can basically become immune. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty intense. But yeah, you can see here that we've placed an explosive charge here on this unearthed remnant. Uh, and we're going to have a 35% chance now to drop an additional stack deck for this explosion, so the explosion I just placed, all the monsters around it, and all subsequent explosions. Now, the key thing here is that if I was to place, for example, an explosive charge here, and then an explosive charge here, this first explosion would not be affected by this loot modifier. It is very, very important the ordering in which you do them. So you need to get the best remnants first and early so that on subsequent explosions, you're going to get that bonus on all of them. This is incredibly important and it is going to tr contribute to why you get significantly less loot if you don't actually pay attention to the mechanic. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a little bit more of an advanced mechanic. It's one of the more advanced ones we've ever had. Um, but yeah, if you do it correctly, you are going to get a reasonable amount of loot, and that is pretty good. But obviously, you have to make sure that you tune it up to a point where you don't get one shot and kill it. So yeah, we're going to slap this on this 35% uh, chance to get a stack deck here. Um, so I wouldn't mind grabbing this pack size as well. Um, so we're going to grab that, and we're going to scoop that yellow chest as well. Now, I'm really looking for runic monsters here. That's what I'm looking for. And I also want to push this fuse up as far as possible. So each of the fuses, if you notice, actually do have a ranger on as well. And the new range is always going to be set by your most previous fuse that you put down the explosion. But it also does seem that you can, um, you know, have a pretty bit, pretty bit of flexibility with that. Um, you know, it is basically going to be a radius around it. So you can kind of like see what we're doing here. So generally, you want to try and scoop up as many monsters and chests as you can, um, while also doing the remnants in the correct order. And you do get some pretty satisfying gameplay from that, in my opinion. Make sure you dodge any remnants which are actually going to harm you. Uh, but we're going to go over here now. So I can get 50% increased quantity of artifacts here, which is pretty good. And I can scoop up a 25% increased pack size and some chests. Hopefully, hopefully we can get it. It's just out of range, I think. Yeah, I can't reach that. Uh, that's okay, though. I need to come in this direction anyway. So we're going to grab that. Really a little bit sad about those chests. Um, so I want to get runic monsters here. So I got two more charges here, you can see. Uh, important to note that you can undo your placement by one. Um, so I think I need to place one here to get these chests. That would be my plan. Uh, penetration is okay with me. Uh, and then I'm going to come over here and try and get this massive reward pile here. So I've got three runic monsters here, four runic monsters here. And I also have a, um, a chest here, which I can do as well. So I'm going to place that down. And now I uh, have the option to detonate the explosives. You can still backtrack if you want to kind of reset. Um, but overall, it's going to be pretty good. And I'm going to blow these up and hopefully we can get this done. So my advice is always to run pretty far away from the mechanic uh, because it's incredibly lethal if you just stand in the middle. Uh, you're just going to take it, if you know what I mean. Um, so I kind of like, like to come away and like just sit over here and kind of uh, off-screen them. That's my approach to it, and it does work out pretty well. I'm in red maps, after all, and it's like, you know, it's doing okay. Uh, we got a first stack deck. We got our first Astragali. Uh, it's one of the more common rerolls. Um, we get a ton of uh, the, the artifacts. We got another Astragali. We got another stack deck here. Uh, Noble Claw, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, looks like we got um, some reasonable loot. Uh, we got some uh, of the currencies here. Um, you know, it seems okay. Like, uh, so stack decks are probably worth like one or two C uh, in, in when most people probably get to end game. So, you know, what's that? Eight chaos. Uh, but I wouldn't have got any of those stack decks at all if I didn't do my sequencing correctly and I didn't unearth all of the runic monsters. It's very, very important that you do that. Um, otherwise, you're not going to have any luck. And now, this is particularly important when it comes to logbooks. I'm going to do many, many videos on logbooks. They are incredibly powerful. I'm going to link a clip to you guys down below which shows some of the high-end potential of logbooks and the rewards they get. It's a picture of someone getting about 20 or 30 scarabs from a logbook, but there's tons of stuff to consider, and the sequencing of your explosions in logbooks is even more important because you have so many remnants and rewards to choose from. 
And in addition to that, you also really want to be do, be scouting out your logbooks as um, they have hidden areas which you can blow up, which contain, you know, anywhere between, you know, two to three, all the way up to six chests of additional loot. And in addition to that, they can also um, contain this side bosses, the new end endgame bosses, which are the, the four of the new bosses. Now these bosses uh, actually do drop an incredible amount of the uh, of the currency and the currency the reroll currency and the cur reroll currencies also do drop in logbooks. I think the logbooks I've done one of the most logbooks I've done so far. I think I've done about three or four of them now. Uh, one of the logbooks dropped like six of the Deneg um, reroll currencies. Um, so it was completely crazy. Uh, there's definitely a lot of opportunity for rewards in the uh, in the actual mechanic itself. Uh, and I, uh, the few of I've done, I felt pretty rewarded uh, personally, and I think it's pretty fun. Uh, I really do enjoy the mechanic at large, and it's quite fun mechanically. I can understand how some people think it's a little undertuned, and I would like to see them improve the rewards in logbooks, probably about you know by a little bit, maybe make them more exciting and rare remnants like the ones which give scarabs like at X percent of the time. Uh, a little bit more common, and I'd like to see maybe some of those really, really powerful remnants in maps as well. I have seen one here and there, but I think the gold remnants should be more and more common. And by that, I mean remnants. Um, uh, so you can see how this has a silver tinge. There's big ones which have a gold tinge. Those are the ones which drop stuff like League Mechanic-based stuff, like, as I mentioned, Scarabs. Um, and like Legion Splinters and stuff like that. I'd like to see them a little bit more common in maps as well. Um, now, the other thing you're looking for is obviously those hidden areas. Some of them will be marked on the map, some of them will not. And the mark on the map looks a little bit like a, um, a blue kind of circle with gray around it. I know that's hard to describe. I'll have future videos on it uh, coming up. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna quickly pour it out here because uh, my inventory is full. Uh, but we will do that right now. Uh, there seems to be quite a lot of loot to pick up there, but let's talk a little bit about the vendors really quickly. And I want to kind of give you guys a bit of an interesting take on this guy. Uh, so the first one here is Tujen. So Tujen is easily the best uh, vendor for most players. Uh, looks like we've actually got some new um, some new uh, features in here. That's pretty good. Uh, he's easily the best vendor for a lot of new players. I think my absolute highlight was getting 22C raw in the window. Um, from him, from one of the coin rerolls. Uh, obviously, you know, you can get some bad rerolls, but more often than not, he's going to have some pretty damn good stuff if you can get some rerolls for him, and you can haggle him down sometimes to about one third of the listed price. So let's say we wanted to buy these um, regrets. I always do this strategy here. I'm going to start at one third. He's going to be like, yo, no. I'm going to go back down to one third, and he's going to give them to me. Uh, and generally, that's kind of how I go about it. I'm going to do it again. Uh, and I kind of like, if you do... Um, haggle with him too hard. He's um, he's gonna basically tell you to go away. Um, for the most part, you know he's pretty reasonable, and you just go one third, one third, one third, one third until it's like really, really narrow, uh, and then you're gonna be able to buy the item for the minimum amount of currency. Uh, which is really, really good. Now, you do need to make sure you pay attention to what he's actually charging you. He's not always going to charge you the same amount. It's not like tribute. Sometimes he will considerably overprice items. Like, you'll be like, yeah, give me, uh, you know, give me like 300 great Grand Black Scythe artifacts for this stack of 10 Chaos. That's a ridiculous price, and you're actually losing money. So you need to pay attention to the different currencies he's charging you, and that goes for all vendors overall, uh, and it's going to be really good. So the bottleneck here is Exotic Coinage. They have said they might buff this, and there's also obviously significant ways to improve your chances of getting exotic coinage, uh, and overall it's going to be pretty good, as long as you can get some of the reroll tokens, but we'll talk about that in future videos. But doing remnants, juicing that up is definitely the primary way of doing so. All right, let's move up here. I'm going to stash some of the stuff, and we're going to do over one point that I forgot in uh, maps, uh, and then uh, we'll move on to talking about the other vendors really quickly and wrap up. All right, so let's jump back in here, uh, and we'll uh, quickly discuss this. Um, so... One final point I want to talk about in maps, uh, while I loot the stuff, is that you can see what kind of um, currency and what kind of reroll tokens are going to be on offer by observing which vendor is present. So right now we have Gwenin. All of the currency that we're going to be getting is going to be for Gwenin, and all of the reroll currency that could drop is going to be for Gwenin. So if you hate Gwenin, well, you can skip all of the Gwenin uh, encounters in your maps and just do Tujen, um, Rog, and the Nick. Um, so yeah, that's basically going to be that. You, Gwenin is easily the worst one by far so far, um, at least in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, you can skip the ones which you don't like. Uh, she's basically the stone circles of, uh, of this leap mechanic uh, overall. 
So yeah, pretty interesting. So you can see who's present. And this also goes for logbooks. Again, I don't have any on hand, but you can see which faction and which vendor is going to be present. Uh, so for Tujen, Black Scythe is his. So he's definitely one of the best ones. Um, you can see what Rog is um, just by looking at the, the, the monies they have here. So yeah, Tujen is Black Scythe. Um, Gwenon is Broken Circle, so if you have a logbook, you probably want to shy away from Broken Circle, as it's easily the worst one. Um, you know, Rog is Grand Order, and then um, we've got uh, Grand Sun from the Nick, uh, which is pretty good. And the primary thing you're doing that the logbook's for are the reroll tokens, and I think the best one is easily Tujan and the Nick. Uh, Rog is pretty damn good, but I'm uh, too stupid to be able to use him, unfortunately. It definitely is a bit unlucky. All right, speaking of Rogue, let's get into him. So Rogue is definitely the hardest one to use. He's a fairly advanced one, at least for me. You do need to have a pretty damn good understanding of how Path of Exile crafting works in order to get anything good from him. If you just blindly click, 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 you're gonna basically get a piece of trash, but I've had multiple people link me insane items, you know, like Tri-Res, T1 Life Boots. Um, you know, I've seen people with massive physical weapons and all sorts of stuff like that linked to me. Um, now, Rog can, uh, I, if I understand correctly, apply influence to items. I believe that was confirmed in my chat. So there is scope to create pretty end game items, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, what do we got here? Let's just do this amulet. Um, let's buy that. Um, so you can see here, it's essentially a crafting window. Uh, so remove all suffix modifiers. So if you hold alt, you can be like, okay, what are my suffix? So I can remove T1 dex. That's not that good. I think T1 dex is a pretty good role. Um, but overall, you can basically have three options. In the trailer, it was a binary thing. It was basically you get it or you don't. Um, or you, like, and, and they changed that to include skip. So this basically makes the mechanic uh, on another level. It makes this a viable crafting option. The ability to skip a poor crafting option and continue is ridiculous. And it is going to make it so that you can actually make good items with Rog. It's a massive buff. Uh, and overall, he's actually pretty good for crafting if you understand what he's telling you. Um, there's definitely some incredibly powerful options. Now, things I'd like to see changed from Rog is that he would offer uh, influenced bases um, from the window. Okay, um... Uh, uh, take item. Uh, influence items from the window that would push this guy into actually being insane, uh, which is what we uh, what we would need uh, in, in order for him. Well, he's going to be good, but he needs to be able to get influence straight away. Um, getting it later on sucks. Um, so with all these guys, there's going to be a set amount of interactions that you can do with them for each trait. So for example, for Tu uh, Tujen, uh, after a certain amount of haggles, he's basically going to tell you it's stuffed. Um, with Rog, after a certain amount of craft, he's going to be like, all right, that's enough, man. You've had enough. I'm cutting you off. Uh, he does that. And then, obviously, we've got Gwen in here. Uh, Gwen is, is probably the most accessible. Uh, her rerolls are incredibly common. Her currencies aren't too rare. Uh, like, they're pretty, like, everything's priced pretty affordably. <laughs> um, but overall, like, this, uh, this, um... I saw the belt here. Um, but overall, you know, she's definitely the most hit or miss. Uh, it's very difficult to get anything of value outside of Gwen. It's very much you either win or you don't. Um, lots of people have linked me stuff like that. Someone's linked me a Soul Taker. Lots of people have linked me Soul Rest. Lots of people have linked me like Headhunter. Um, so lots of people are getting good stuff from her. Uh, I haven't gotten anything good from her at all. The only unique I've gotten is a unique Coral Ring, which is pretty hilarious. But essentially the gameplay behind her um, will be to, uh, on the surface level, pick uh, bases which have good uniques. I believe Tripolar Bears already put together a list of the bases you want to be picking up. And then on the second level, you can go for good rares and, um, and jewels and stuff like that. She can give you influence items, so there is also another dimension to that. Uh, there can be any of the influences, and I believe they probably can be synthesized as well, but I'm yet to see that. I can confirm she does give you influenced items, though. Uh, so that's Gwenon. And then, of course, uh, potentially one of the most powerful um, is, uh, is actually, um, is actually Danig. Uh, so Danig, the reason he's so powerful is because upon re-rolling, he is going to offer you re-roll tokens for everybody else, which you can buy with his currency, which is pretty good. Um, so his currency is all about just buying other NPCs' currencies. Um, and it's, it's basically an exchange vendor, uh, but you can buy rerolls. That's basically what you should prioritize buying, in my opinion. Um, but you can also buy the uh, opposing or well, the other guy's um, currencies for a better exchange rate if you reroll him. Uh, in addition to that, you can also purchase logbooks. And logbooks are essentially insane. I would say that they're probably 
uh, way better than Blighted Maps um, overall. They're probably way better than the loot from a 5-way Legion on average as well outside of the unique drop. I would probably put them right up there with a Simulacrum in terms of raw loot. Uh, of actually getting stuff from the map, assuming you do the remnants correctly and you're doing a high item level, that's probably what I compare it to. Yeah, a simulacrum. You can get about as many scarabs and about as many loots as uh, a simulacrum from it. So it's actually pretty rewarding. Uh, there's probably a little bit of wiggle room to make it a little bit more rewarding uh, because there's a lot of skill involved, well, some skill, but planning involved, and there's a lot of downtime, there's a lot of um, loot looting and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, I think it's pretty damn good. All right, hope you guys have enjoyed this quick, well, not quick, uh, this brief breakdown. I have still so much to learn about Expedition, but this is what I know so far, and hopefully it helps you guys out with getting a bit of loot from the mechanic. I think it's reasonably rewarding. Um, I'd say probably about 10% of my total wealth has come from Expedition so far, uh, which is, you know, not heaps, but it's also not terrible. Um, you know, logbooks are pretty good, and once you start farming them, we we'll start getting into them. I think it's going to be pretty good. Overall, I have been skipping it quite a bit in um, in maps because I'm just trying to, trying to get my Alice completion up. But I think it's a pretty damn good mechanic. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to engaging with it now that I've pretty much finished on my Atlas and my character is in a really good spot. So with all that said, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.